When most people think of public health, they think of hospitals and doctors and things like that. It's such a narrow concept of what actually creates and reinforces positive public health. So I'm down here at Ward 21 here, um, outside Ward 21. I've been in Ward 21 a couple of times um, and it basically just made me want to kill myself even more. And as Mike King has said recently, uh, we actually have a health system that is set up uh, like we've got a suicide prevention system that is set up to make people want to commit, uh, want to attempt to commit suicide um, to be dealt with. Uh, we're looking at these issues and in, in, in too, it's the, the, the issue, it, we're looking at in too narrow a focus. We need to widen our lens on these issues and look at the structural violence that is in society. And basically, what structural violence is, is uh, and there's a number of uh, public health researchers that have, have been working on this issue. If you investigate people like Dr. James Gilligan or uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, uh, where there's, we have a lot of data now about how society, how the pressures in society affect us psychologically uh, uh, in relationship to our place in the social, social hierarchy and how we see each other and ourselves in relation to all of that creates po negative public health outcomes. So if we're actually interested in solving this massive public health crisis, and, and by that I don't just mean the suicide stats, but we're talking about non-contagious diseases like cancer and heart disease, and there's many, many, many other other issues, public health issues. It's a, basically a vast spectrum of disorder right across society. If we're really serious about actually starting to address some of these issues properly, then we need to start looking at public health in a much broader focus. And in fact, public health includes crime and, and all the drug use and everything we see across society. We can't separate law and order out from public health. Law and order is a public health issue and we really, really need to start understanding this. This current social model that we endure has no concept of human need built into the system at all. And that's the, real, that's the big realisation. Once you understand that, you see the vast destruction across society, both ecologically and socially. So we've now got a, a social model that's destroying the planet and destroying human psychology. And unless we start to, as Noam Chomsky, Noam Chomsky, the most cited academic in history, has said recently that we've now reached a point, after 200,000 years, we've now reached a point that we need to make a decision as to whether organised human life is going to continue to exist on this planet. You know, and it's a simple... I, I don't want to do an advertisement for you, but that is beautiful air. Yes. Well, you might have a big fat mortgage and a big fat interest rate to service that mortgage, I know I certainly do, but what if we told you that the money the bank lent you doesn't actually exist? You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Sounds crazy.